One task that I have always done with my Google Analytics accounts was set up audiences. Yes, we can keep an eye on these certain groups of users that we're setting up within analytics, but most importantly, from the paid media standpoint, we can import these audiences into Google ads. This allows us to add these audiences to campaigns to use as observation levels, or also potentially a targeting feature for specific campaigns. Now the setup for audiences in GA4 is different than Universal Analytics. So I wanna show you how you can do that within your GA4 properties, and also you'll get an understanding of what options you have. Then we wanna make sure that our properties are linked, and I'm looking at GA4 and Google Ads specifically, and there are two ways that we can do this. And then last, of course, we're gonna go into Google Ads and see where we can exactly add these audiences within our campaigns. Before we can upload audiences into Google Ads, we have to have audiences set up in GA4 first. Makes sense, right? But right away, I have to say, we're not gonna be able to cover every single type of audience you can create within GA4. There are so many types of audiences that you can create within Google Analytics. I at least wanna show you where you can go to start setting them up to give you some direction on options you can explore and if you would even wanna create certain types of audiences to potentially track or just target within Google Ads. If you look at the left-hand navigation, the audiences section is kind of highlighted in blue. So here's where you can go in and review certain audiences if you already have them created. I haven't had this GA4 property created for a long time, but I can tell you there are a few audiences that were automatically created the very second I created this GA4 property. There was an all users one and then a purchasers. Even if you're not an e-commerce site, Google's gonna try to set this type of audience up. Now the blog visits audience is one I had to do manually. And I will show you how to go in and create new audiences. And you probably saw it already with the blue button, new audience. So let's head there right now. We're gonna go in and start from scratch and create a custom audience. But you do notice that there are suggested audiences below and that's under the general tab. But if I move over to the templates tab, there are a few options there based on demographics, technology, and the acquisition section, which is also another area you can see in the left-hand navigation of GA4. These templates are helpful, and they are gonna have common ones that you'll probably wanna set up, but everything within these templates or suggested audiences are all gonna be available within the custom audiences that we're gonna review. So I'm just gonna head back up there. The first thing you need to do when creating your new custom audience is to add a condition. And the first option we see is events. In GA4, there are several events that are automatically created by Google. But within our property and other properties that we have set up for clients, we've had to go in and create our own events because then those events can be turned into conversions and that's what we can use to better assess the value of performance within GA4. So you can see as I'm scrolling down, we see stuff for apps, visits, specific notifications, page views, and of course some of my favorites. We see how certain video actions have gone at the bottom then I'm gonna scroll back up. But this kind of goes back to an old video I created of how you can set up audiences based on user actions. Now that video was specifically for universal analytics, but it might give you some ideas and strategies that you can put in place to actually go after users who have performed certain actions. And those actions, or now within GA4 we call them events, can better help you hone in on a specific user intent. So if I choose this event for an example, and even though GA4 has a cutoff, it was app store subscription cancel. I can create an audience off of people who canceled their subscription for my app. That is a very specific intent. And then you can use this strategy to decide, do I wanna negate these users for a certain period of time? They canceled, they might not be happy with their service, I just need to give them some space. Or do you go back with those users a few months later with a special offer, a heavy discount, just to slowly bring them back into your brand? I'm gonna go back so we can move on, but just remember that all the events that you create for GA4 can be used as a condition to create new audiences. Now we can move on to the basic dimensions. There is a custom option. I'm not gonna click on it because this is our example account. We don't have any custom dimensions created, but if you do set up any custom dimensions for GA4, yes, you can use those to create audiences as well, but a common one will be demographics. And for demographics, we can create audiences based off of age, gender, and interests. And these interests are the in-market audiences that we can target within Google Ads. So let me go back up to age. Right now I'm creating an audience to include users. When the age is one of, I could switch it to is not one of. And if I go down to the options point, there are the age breakouts that we can also target within Google Ads. I'm gonna select my age range. And then now's a good time to talk about some of the additional condition groups you can add. Yes, I could create an audience just off of this age range. But we see off to the side, I could add an or condition to it or an and condition. I selected and, and I want a new condition. 
Now I'm creating an audience that is only going to be made up of females ages 35 to 44. Just to look at the rest of the demographic conditions, I'm going to add another layer. This time I'm choosing the in-market interest ID. I just typed in one letter and it's going to provide you with the list of the in-market audiences. If you're familiar with which in-market audience you want to include within your audience that you are creating, just start searching for it, type it in, and then you can keep on adding any additional layers to this audience if you want to. I'm going to start removing some of these layers and then go on to the next dimension, which is event. Now we already had the events option, but as I mentioned earlier, those events can be turned into conversions. So if you have those specific events approved to be tracked as conversions, you can then create audiences from those conversions. And that's something that is very common. We will either use those conversion audiences to use as exclusions, just so we're not showing ads to users who have already performed that conversion action. Or sometimes we will use those audiences as a root audience to create new similar audiences to use for other top of funnel campaigns. So in this example, I'm creating an audience off of anyone who performed a conversion action. Pretty straightforward. Moving down a little bit, we see options for gaming. I have never had a gaming client, so I'm not going to speak on this one too much, but we can see that there are dimension options for what level the user is within a game, and then the virtual currency type. Next, we can create audiences off of the geography that the user is from, their city, continent, the country ID, the region, and in some cases, the subcontinent. It's easy just to pick one of these examples. The options here exactly matches, does not exactly match. And I just quickly typed in one city. We see there are a few Chicago options, and you can do this for all the different levels of geography that are out there. After geography, you can create audiences by the page or screen. And look at all the options for content ID, content type, the host name, the page path, and the page title. This is where we get to some of the URL specific type options. I skipped over one there. There's page path and screen class page title and screen class, or page title and screen name. Moving down then, we have platform and device. We see visits by specific app stores. That's assuming since this is GA4 that you have Firebase set up, knowing where that user is coming from from the app side of it. But then you can create audiences from specific browsers and browser versions, the device that the user's on, the language code of that device, the operating system, the different platforms, the screen resolution. You can get pretty specific from this one. Next, we have publisher. This is for any of you out there who are running AdSense or Ad Exchange reports. Information based off of that within GA4 can be created as an audience. Then we have session. If you want to choose a specific session number, that's an audience option and a fairly popular one. Then you can create audiences off of a specific time. What year was it when that user visited the website? Was it a specific month, week? If you get enough traffic to create an audience from people who visited a specific date, Kudos to you, because you do have that option and you can import that into Google Ads. One of my personal favorites is traffic source. Whether it's just for your paid media campaigns or any marketing efforts that you're doing, hopefully you are tagging all of your URLs with specific parameters. One thing we like to do from social media is to create audiences from people who visited from, let's say, our Facebook ads campaigns or our LinkedIn ads campaigns. We'll create audiences from those specific channels, specifically the source and medium, knowing that they came from a paid medium. And then we'll continue that user's journey with remarketing. And that'll be especially true if we add in the campaign name to it. If I know someone specifically came from this exact LinkedIn ads campaign, I know the initial message that they saw. I know the landing page that that user saw. If I have a healthy audience, I can then remarket to those people and try to get them to the next step of my journey within the funnel. The traffic source dimension has always been a powerful remarketing audience that I've liked to create. And if you haven't done this one yet, I strongly recommend it. Again, this does not have to be for other paid campaigns. Look at audiences you may want to create from referral traffic, from email campaigns. Take all that valuable traffic and see what else you can do with them with audiences. After traffic source, there's user. Now, user IDs can help you keep track of users if they're logging in from multiple devices because then each user ID will be counted as a unique user. So you might get more accurate information within Google Analytics if you are using them. Then after user, there's user lifetime. Audiences off of when was that user's first purchase date and when was their first session date that was recorded within the GA4 property. I'm going to skip over other because there's a few repeat options there and stuff that's really not that common. So I want to go back up to traffic source because that is one of my favorites. I'm going to go down in order. So let's choose campaign source. We see a few different options there. And I'm going to choose another condition. I'm going to keep within traffic sources. 
Next, I'll choose Medium. We're not running any specific Google Ads campaigns for our own website right now, but CPC would show up there. Now I'm just creating an audience off of anyone who came from any of my Google Ads campaigns. I just wanna get something in place so we can look a little bit off to the right-hand side. Default membership is gonna be 30 days. Maximum limit, and typically that maximum membership duration is 540 days. Besides the membership duration, you can also set up an audience trigger. And this lets us create an event when someone becomes part of this audience. So I'm about to save this one, but if I do start running Google Ads campaigns, anyone who visits my website that has this GA4 tag on it, it's going to fire an event that I'll be able to track. If I want to, I could check this additional box, and as you can see, it's gonna log an additional event when the audience membership refreshes. For now, I don't want that, but I will save this. And as you can see, it's gonna save that specific event name. And then yes, if we go back to that specific events dimension, I will be able to find this audience later on. I would like to save this one, but I need to name it first. Otherwise it won't let me save it. I'm gonna bring this one back down to 30 days and now I can save it. And there we see my audience is created. Now, before you get too audience crazy and start going in and creating a ton of different options, I have to let you know that you can only create 100 audiences per GA4 property. If your website gets a ton of traffic, you're gonna have many more options of audiences that you may want to test, but that 100 audience limit might make you have to reprioritize which audiences you would wanna create first. So hopefully I give you a good understanding of what types of audiences you can create based upon the data that you are collecting within your GA4 property. Now let's move on to the next step of how we can add any of these audiences we're creating to our Google Ads campaigns. And before we can do that, we need to make sure that your GA4 property is linked to Google Ads. And there are two ways to do this. Since we're already in Google Analytics, let's start with that option. First, we need to go to Admin, which you can see is in the lower left-hand corner, and we see the Google Ads logo right in the middle. Within our property column, under Product Linking, there's Google Ads Linking. We clearly have this one linked already, but you'll see the blue link button off there if this is new to you. Just make sure that you have admin rights for both the Analytics account as well as the Google Ads account. Otherwise, you may not see the proper property or account showing up. Since we wanna view these audiences within Google Ads anyway, let's hop into Google Ads to see how we can link the accounts from that end. If you wanna link Google Analytics within Google Ads, first go up to Tools and Settings, and then under Setup, you will see Linked Accounts. Now I know some accounts have it different. This overall setup column might be completely separate from tools and settings. Either way, find the little gear icon and then go to linked accounts. So now we see two options. There's universal analytics to the top left, and then we see GA4 and Firebase to the top right. Click on details, and already we have this property linked within our account. We've been feeding the data back and forth for about a week now, and this is where you'll be able to link it. Once you have the accounts linked, it could take up to 24 hours for the audiences to start showing up within Google Ads. Now I'm gonna transition to a specific ad group so we can see where we can find these audiences. If you look in the top bar right here, I have a specific display campaign set up and I'm already in an ad group. And then if we look over here on the left-hand side, I'm already in the audience section. So right now I'm gonna add audiences to this specific ad group. I'm gonna go to browse and these audiences are gonna be found within remarketing. If I go to website visitors, there we see the three GA4 properties that were created right when I started this video. It's gonna take a little bit for that new Google Ads visitors audience I just created because there's no time transition within this video. I literally just created that audience just a few minutes ago. So I'll need to check back later and make sure it's ready to be used. And just like any other audience you can use within Google Ads, you can choose to use the audience from a targeting method, specifically only targeting your ads to that specific audience you created or you can use that audience from an observation level, and that's gonna be more for search, of just collecting data on how users within that audience perform for your Google Ads campaigns. Hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of what you can do with audiences within GA4. The sooner you get GA4 set up on your website, the sooner you'll be able to start collecting data, and the more data you start collecting, it's gonna give you more options you can use for audiences within Google Ads. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.